All right, we'll get started. Um, welcome everybody. I guess we sh this is uh, welcome to Zoom room number one. And uh, we'll have Coach Dave Lato from DePaul on. And um, we'll ask Dave to make an opening statement and then to ask a question, hit that raise hand feature uh, uh, along the bottom of your screen and then it will show up here and we'll be able to call on you to ask questions. So. Uh, Dave, thanks for joining us. And um, if you want to give us kind of an opening statement on your team, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, thank you, John, and good morning to everybody. Um, as we gather in the strangers of times and not in person, you know, obviously we, we find ourselves trying to maneuver uh, as best we can. And so with relation to this season and our team, you know, it's been a uh, an opportunity as much as anything else to uh, try to figure out day by day in creative ways, you know, how you prepare your team, how you get them ready for what, you know, I anticipate will again be a year in and year out, tremendous and competitive Big E season. Um, as we enter the season, you know, we, we talk about last year as, as we always do in preparation of this year and you know, in, in summation, real quickly from last year, we had started out in a non-conference season, you know, well, and then uh, during conference season, for a lot of a lot of reasons that uh, will we'll go unmentioned, we we weren't as successful, but we were competitive enough to think that we had made some improvements with our program. We entered the Big East tournament uh, uh, with, a, with a bit of a mindset that we could make some noise, and uh, obviously after our Xavier game. You know, COVID-19 forced the end of the tournament and the end of the season. So it, since that day, it's been for every coach, me included, a challenge to uh, organize yourself in all aspects, your team, uh, their mindset, the physical uh, nature of how they go about their business in the spring and the summer in preparation for the season, your recruiting, every aspect of your program has been a challenge. And so we try to meet that challenge without any excuses to try to move forward every day. Uh, this upcoming season, I wanted to make sure to give us a, a great opportunity to uh, make strides, not just with our team, but within our program. Uh, Charlie Moore uh, returning you know, is somebody who uh, I believe uh, will have a major impact, not only with our team, but within this league. He returns as the number one assist guy in our league. And I think the number two returning scorer, if I'm, Correct, John, uh, with that. So we have somebody who has a lot of college experience. You know, he's got his feet wet in the Big East last year uh, and will again lead our team as we move forward. I wanted to get older, so we are recruiting. You know, brought in some people that that uh, I thought had had college experience and had success on that level. Uh, and then uh, with some returners as well, you know, mainly Romeo Weems, we, we felt like we could create balance with some of the guys that have been here and had gone through the wars of, of which this conference will bring about with some new people that will create some, some experience that we could combine uh, to fight the battles that, that we're getting ready to fight. Uh, obviously, it uh, goes without saying, and I'm sure everybody uh, on this call has already talked about it, what, what is in front of us is still unknown. Uh, Val Ackerman and Stu Jackson and Tracy Ellis Ward, who, who head up both men's and women's basketball are diligently every day putting together uh, opportunities for us to play, you know, the, the, the season that uh, I, I hope we'll be able to play. So uh, because we don't know exactly what tomorrow will bring, I know my mindset and try to keep our team's mindset is concentrating on the things that we can control, which is today. We'll practice this afternoon and try to have a great practice and then worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. And as we uh, prepare, uh, for our non-league schedule first. We'll try to put our best foot forward to make sure that um, we're in the right mindset and the right physical space to be successful. Thanks, Dave. Let's go to questions. We see, have some questions here. Uh, first, uh, we're gonna go to John Akers, Basketball Times. John, unmute and fire away. Hey, Coach. Um, you've got a lot of seniors on this roster and the NCAA is offering an extra season of eligibility. Is there any chance next year you might have a big roster with, with five-year players? Uh, yeah, there is a chance. You know, uh, I, I think we've talked very, very briefly about it uh, because again, uh, as I mentioned, I, I don't know what space 
uh, emotionally or structurally, everybody will be in come March or April when those decisions will, will need to be made. Um, so for right now, I think it's, it's, it's an opportunity that we're afford to uh, our, our seniors. Uh, and so that along with conversations administratively will determine how and what this thing will, will look like you know, when those decisions be made. Obviously recruiting uh, has taken shape, so I don't wanna slow down recruiting and, and start worrying about the scholarships that we you know, will be over. But I think it's a great opportunity for those who have gone through a lot so far and will continue to go through a lot to continue the college career for another year. So, you know, uh, optimistically, I'd hope that uh, our seniors will take advantage of it, but time will tell as to how that gets rolled out. Thanks. All right, let's go to Dave Borges, New Haven Register. Dave. Hey, Dave, how you doing? <clears throat> Good, Dave. Uh, just, yeah, just wanted to ask you, first of all, your thoughts on UConn returning to the Big East, what that means for them and for the conference, and also what it means to you and, and just in terms of how close that program remains to you, even though it's been a while since you've been there, what the UConn program meant to you in your development as a, as a, as a coach. Yeah, you know, so, so I appreciate that. And, and I knew, you know, once those conversations started that um, there would be conversation and, and maybe even conversation directed at me because of my history there. But, um, you know, it, it, it my time there has meant the world to me personally, has meant the world to me professionally. Uh, them entering back into the Big East is monumental because of success that they've had uh, as a major force in this league. Uh, I, I compliment Coach Hurley for quickly returning back to a style of play and a uh, physical nature and, a, and a, you know, the, the things that UConn has stood for, he's quickly returned to, uh, as well as having a really good team. So uh, there's, there's an immediate worry from my standpoint about the, the, the two visits that we'll uh, have with them, one here in Chicago and, and one in Connecticut. So, um, you know, I, I think there's the here and now of which Coach Hurley's done a really good job and then there's a historical part. And I'm sure, you know, going back there will, we'll, as I have before with, with a couple of other teams, will be a little bit more emotional than a normal game. But, you know, our team and their team will compete at a high level as all schools and, and teams do in this league. And, and so I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to seeing some, some old faces uh, and uh, and just enjoying the experience because I know the positivity of UConn and the Big East has, has been such a wonderful thing nationally for college basketball. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to Steve Newhouse. We are DePaul. Hi, Dave. Uh, you lose uh, two starters from last year's squad. I know you got a lot of new faces, newcomers for this year. Who do you see as vying for those filling that void of those two starting spots? Yeah, with uh, with the two guys lost, you know, Jalen Coleman lands and and especially Paul Reed, you know, it, it leaves a little bit of a void. Uh, Coleman lands was a was a really good shooter for us and and scorer, and Paul was a jack of all trades, a tremendous rebounder on both ends, and scored in so many different ways. And so those those leave a little bit of a hole and and experience as well. So that's, that's one of the reasons I said I wanted to get a little older. Uh, but for, for us, you know, what, one of the challenges that we had was uh, on the perimeter, being able to make a lot of different kinds of plays. By that, I mean, Charlie Moore was, was one of the reasons he led the Big East in assists was because he had the ball in his hands so much and he played a lot of minutes. So in an effort to, to make him better, I thought we needed to surround him with more playmakers. And I think we did that in, in our recruiting and could diversify ourselves and who's handling the ball and who's making decisions. Um, he's a combination, Charlie is, of, of scorer and distributor. And so I wanted to bring about more of the scoring from his game. And so, you know, guys like uh, Javon Freeman, uh, Liberty Freeman, excuse me, and and Ray Salverna, who came over from Monmouth, and Kobe Elvis, a freshman that we have, um, Kovacier McCauley, we, we added those guys to our backcourt. So one, they could bring some scoring punch, uh, and two, some versatility on who's making the decisions 
you know, in, uh, on our, on our team, you know, uh, I think as we got a little older, I mentioned a guy who finished off, uh, the season can mature and be part of that role as well. So I wanted to solidify our backcourt and make sure that we uh, were diversified in, in our attempt to spread the floor and, and play in great space and not just put all the decision making onto Charlie's shoulders. And so I'm, I'm happy we did that and, and we'll see how that uh, plays itself out. Let's go to Neil Ostrout, Manchester Journal Enquirer. Uh, hey, Dave, how you doing? Good, Neil. How uh, how well do you know Danny? Uh, either from you know way back when coaching against him, you know when he was a player. I don't know if you had the scout in that '96 uh, game when he was one for 13 or whatever. But how well do you know him as a as a coach now, and have you interacted with him much? You know we're we're we're, we're good friends, we're colleagues. You know we uh, Danny and the whole Hurley family go back a long, long way with with me. You know when I was a player. Uh, there, we, I played with two St. Anthony's players. And so that, you know, at Northeastern with Coach Calhoun, and that was an introduction to Coach Hurley, uh, Danny's dad. And it continued from there. Um, I can't tell you how many trips I've made to White Eagle Hall, you know, and, and years gone by and watching Bobby and Danny get yelled at by, by their dad. But I think what, what came out of there was a certain level of toughness that, you know, Coach Hurley uh, had with, with the St. Anthony's programs and his two sons, particularly in this case, Danny, uh, came from that. And so uh, automatically as a, as a player, uh, both in high school and at Seton Hall, uh, as a coach in high school, uh, as a college coach, and, he, and now, you know, toughness and, and, and never say die attitude and playing the game the right way were always something that I had a very high level of respect for from him as well as the whole Hurley family. And so uh, I'm not surprised, you know, as to what is going on in the transformation very positively with what he's done in a short period of time at UConn. And, you know, I, I, I think of him with the highest level of respect and admiration because how he's grown in this game, he's paid his dues. He wasn't given anything because he was a coach's son. He had to earn everything, particularly to be Bobby's younger brother. Uh, with all the accolades that 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 Bobby had gotten as a player at Duke and in the NBA, so uh, uh, again, I think he's the right man at the right time uh, for for UConn. Go to Lawrence Kramer, DePaulia. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good, Lawrence. Um, coach, could you talk about the the non conference schedule a little bit? I believe you guys have Loyola, Northwestern, and Iowa State already scheduled. Could you maybe talk about what the rest of the non-conference schedule might look like? Well, that's been, you know, that's been for everybody in, uh, in, in every conference and, and you know, a, a bit of a challenge because we've had to reduce the number of games from the normal, you know, 29 plus two with MTEs and uh, now, you know, 25 plus two. So it's, it's, it's been a real challenge to, to get that we. We're just at the point where we're finishing uh, uh, our non league scheduling. We'll kind of roll it out in the, in the days and weeks to come. But, um, you know, with, with all the things that are going on with COVID-19 and safety measures, we try to limit the amount of travel uh, that we have. So we were scheduled to go to Las Vegas, uh, and we're not doing that. Uh, we're playing more teams or trying to play teams at home as, as best we can. Uh, we will play in the, in the Big 12 Challenge with Iowa State. You know, details to come very soon with that. As, as the Big East has, has announced uh, through Val, uh, we will not be playing in the Gava games. Uh, and this was our bye year anyway. Uh, so we've had to kind of mix and match. You mentioned, you know, Northwesterns and Loyolas. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure out, and we're in the process of figuring out, you know, which one of those games – or game will have to get postponed a year or which ones we'll, we'll be able to play. So we're, we're at the final stages of determining all of those things. Let's go to Doug Feinberg, AP. Hey coach, good to see you. The, nice to you. the college coaches, uh, coaches in general love to have as much control as possible. And obviously this is a situation with the virus that you, you don't have as much control. 
how do you guys deal with things as far as like, I mean, last minute scheduling and there'll probably be some, some speed bumps or roadblocks thrown in here with, with the virus itself, games may be moved or postponed. How do you handle that day to day, knowing that you really are in a day to day situation as opposed to trying to build up for a, a season in the, the Big East tournament, NCAA tournament down the road potentially? Yeah, that's it, it's a good and challenging question because you're dealing with young people whose lives have been disrupted uh, to the to the nth degree. You know, this is not something that they've ever dealt with or will ever deal, deal with, hopefully, in their lifetimes. There are two pandemics going on at the same time. And so their day-to-day -day life has been turned upside down, and it has been since last March. So when it comes to the season, you know, what I've tried to emphasize with them is two things. One, at the end of the season, it may not be the best team that wins this league or ends up being really doing really well. It may be the team that is the healthiest or who has persevered through the challenges that you mentioned the best, uh, has kept himself the safest. You know, his, his, those kind of things are, are more paramount than a lot of things that we would normally factor in in terms of growth of your team throughout the course of a season. So, you know, that's the first thing. And secondly, the second part of it is, is as you mentioned, you know, tomorrow there's going to be something that's going to come up that we haven't dealt with. And so you have to be open minded to be able to adjust when adjustments are necessary, needed. It could be travel. It could be game postponements or cancellations. It could be without players. It could be a lot of different things. And as opposed to concerning yourself with those things, uh, we've got to really be razor sharp and focusing in on the moment, uh, doing what we need to do today. Uh, to prepare ourselves, to get ready physically and emotionally, but then most importantly, to do what we can to stay safe so that we can get to tomorrow. And if we do that, you know, then hopefully we'll be in a position to play more games than, than somebody who may not or, or somebody who's fallen prey to this horrific you know, uh, coronavirus that we're in the middle of. And so, uh, you know, no one knows what, uh, not even somebody who's a so-called expert, what, what tomorrow or next week will bring. So we just have to be as, as perseverant, if that's the word I can use, as to what we need to do moment by moment, day by day, so we can live to play another day. If I can follow up, I mean, I'm sure you've had conversations with your team in years past about being smart and not doing stupid things from the standpoint of what college kids could normally do. Do you have a different, did you have a different conversation this year about, I mean, now it's really serious, like wearing a mask or don't put yourself in situations where you could get the virus. I mean, is there more to that conversation to start a season than years past in a sense? Daily, 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 you know, 18 to 22 is a tough age to, to put reins on people. Uh, they, they have discovered their independence. They try new things. They go new places. They, they do things in exploration that, that, you know, is part of their maturity. And you're trying to get them every day to, to halt a lot of that process and just be, you know, more of a hermit, you know, come to practice, get on Zoom, go to school and stay in your room. Uh, but, you know, that's, you know, not a hundred percent foolproof method, even if they do that. You know, I, I don't think anybody purposely wants to contract coronavirus, uh, but the limitations on how you make yourself and other rounds you safe is, is what you got to try to do every single day. So, you know, we talk about it, mask wearing, and you know, fortunately for us, there's not a lot of people here on campus, uh, so you can limit the kind of contact you have with uh, other people. But it, it's not just through you know mask wearing and social distancing. You could touch something that somebody who has tested positive and you didn't know it touches, and and that way you can contract it. So we just try to keep it you know in the forefront of our conversation about the methods that that everybody else talks about on how to stay safe. And, uh, and hope for the best. Okay, we'll get in a couple more questions here. We're coming up to our time. Uh, Austin Petalillo. Hey Dave, hope you're doing well. Um, how do you guys ride the momentum that you had from last season heading into this year? Well, you know, momentum is, is part of having an established program that, that you know, can sometimes run itself. Uh, momentum comes from veterans that pass on all of the finer details of why you're successful onto the younger people in your program. 
that's how you have sustained success. So in, in historically in this league, and we talked about it before with the time that UConn has been successful or you know, going back to the days of Georgetown and Syracuse and, you know, now today with, with Villanova, it's, it's sustainability is obviously because you have really good players, but because those players know what is expected of them in, in any particular circumstance, uh, which creates a really positive culture. We got two more. Let's we try that to We've tried to establish a culture. You know, every single aspect of it becomes important. And so we, we think we've created some momentum, uh, not only on the court, but, but off the court especially. And we're going to allow those older guys, even if they're new uh, within our program, to speak to those things on a daily basis so that that culture becomes why you make positive decisions, particularly on the court and in critical situations. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, John Title, Hoops HD. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Go ahead. Morning, Coach. Just wanted to know, um, are you guys doing anything special on Tuesday for Election Day? Uh, you know, so I can, I can proudly say that um, DePaul Athletics has – uh, led the Big East in having 100% of our student athletes registered to vote. So uh, we're ready, aimed. A lot of them have voted already. Uh, and it becomes a significant day, I think, to make sure that everybody is understanding of, of the importance of, of what voting means now and especially moving forward. And so um, quite obviously, we won't, you know, we won't be in school that day. We won't have practice that day. Uh, but you know, we, we're going to probably gather as a team and, and show ourselves positively in, in the community doing something. We, we're still putting the final touches on exactly what that will be. Uh, but it won't be a day off to sit in your room and just and just take it, take it easy. We'll, we'll uh, continue to be at the forefront of, of you know, being a part of this, this new normal as it relates to all the social issues that are going on and particularly on November 3rd, which, which becomes a very significant day in our history. Last question, Jacob Schwartz from Philly. Hey coach, how are you? Good. Always a pleasure first off. Good to see you, good to talk to you. Um, let's, I just wanna make this quick. I know we're on a time limit, so I'll be brief. Uh, my question to you is with Villanova dominating the Big East in probably the last uh, decade, how do you plan to, I guess, challenge Villanova and members of the Big East? Well, you know, I, the, 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 the 363 other days of the year that I, that I smile, uh, I mean, those two days I, I don't because they're a very, very difficult team and program to play against. I think, you know, Jay Wright quite obviously has done a phenomenal uh, job in, in not only getting them to the forefront of college basketball, but you know, it's, it's, it's even harder to keep them there of which he's been able to do. And so, you know, it's, a, it's one basketball wise, it's a very, very hard team to play against because they spread you out and they shoot the ball so well. Uh, they play advantage basketball better than anybody. And so it's, a, it, it, they're, they're as simplistically difficult to prepare for as anybody I've ever been around. Uh, you know, they, they have experience in the backcourt. They have, you know, for a lot of years, uh, uh, Tom Gillespie, Gillespie is, is, the, is the guy now that will lead the charge from, from that. But then they've got a lot of really good players around them. And so um, what they do and how they do it, how fundamentally sound they are, how patient they are, and how they're able to take advantage of your mistakes uh, is beyond the years of, of what those players are. You know, it's, it's what very older players in basketball, not just college basketball, but college basketball in general are able to do is take advantage of those mistakes. So it's a very difficult team to prepare for, although, you know, when you watch them, they're kind of simplistic in their approach, but because of their mindset, the mistake-free and, and uh, the way that they play, the discipline that they play with on both ends of the court uh, makes it a very, very uh, difficult challenge. We've played, we've played them well in Philadelphia a lot. We've got to get over the hump, you know, both in Philly and here in Chicago and hope to do that this year. God bless it. Always good to see you, Coach. Thank you. Good to see you always. Dave, thanks for the time today. We hope to see you soon or maybe not on a Zoom. Maybe it'd be great to see you in person sometime soon. Uh, thanks for your time let's, today. Okay, let's play basketball. Let's play basketball. And, and go right. Dodgers. Thank you. 
Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, right now, over uh, Laval Jordan and Steve Wojciechowski on separate rooms over in rooms two and three. Thank you. Just me and you now.